Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing aftershows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! again guys we are so excited for a brand new season of E's total divas this is the after buzz tv total divas after show thank you so much for coming to hang out with us we are glad that you've joined us my name is christy olson you guys can all keep up with me at christy reports and make sure you use hashtag abtv total divas when talking about the show we'd like to read some of your tweets on the air thank you for joining us on itunes and soundcloud please give us a five star rating write a little comment let us know what you think if you're hanging out with us on youtube i've got the live chat rolling we'll see what you all have to say please hit that thumbs up button and i told you who i am but you're probably wondering who these gorgeous faces are next to me we have a fantastic panel this year tell them who you are guys i am uh, george hermosa you can follow me on the twitter at g hermosa g-h-e-r-m-o-z-a Hi guys, I'm Megan Stecker. So excited to be with you for the first time. I've been watching this Yay. show for Evs, but you to open spot, so I'm so excited to be here. And you guys can tweet me at Megan Stecker. Hey everybody, I'm Paulina Aguilar, and you guys can find me on Twitter at underscore Paulina Aguilar and on Instagram at Paulina and Aguilar. Yay, I cannot wait to chat Total Divas with you guys. But now that I've told you who's here, I actually want to talk to you guys about who is not here. You all may remember our co-host Daria Baranato, who joined us at the end of the season last year. George, where the heck is Daria? Oh, she's in the WWE. She actually got picked up and signed by the WWE. Um, she's currently training in down there and down there in the NXT. So yeah, she is training with the likes of Eva Marie, Cameron. She just had a, a match. I was actually uh, a congratulations, last, Daria. Last week, um, actually, let me just t tie back uh, back to all. I can't even talk right now. Um, former After Buzz guest just last season, Cameron. Yes. Um, I forgot her real name. Ariane. 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 <laughs> uh, coincidentally, Ariane and Daria just had a tag match together awesome. just about a week ago, and they won. Oh, yeah. I can't believe it. It's so them. awesome. And we're going to make sure we squeeze all the behind the scenes juicy stuff out of Daria that we can get, and we'll let you guys know all what that is. Maybe she'll be uh, soon a Total Divas oh member. God, I would love so that. we'll see. Well, let's jump into the show. This is season five, episode one. Love Triangle. And I want to let you all know that we are at a special time tonight, but we were normally are going to be shooting live at 8 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. So make sure you tune in live with us. That starts next week. And then we can get your chats all on the chat roll. And we know what you have to say about the show, too. So let's jump right in. This one started in an odd way for me with a John Cena quote. Yeah. Remember last season premiere was all about Eva and the lioness thing. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, that's a cool new thing that they're doing. But then this one was Cena. Cena's not a total diva. He might be. I don't know. He's <laughs> a little girly tonight for He's, me. He gets more total divas airtime than some of the other divas. <gasps> oh, yes. That's a really good point. Well, of course, we're wrapping up this cliffhanger from last season. Nikki Bella, Dolph Ziggler, John Cena. Ziggler's the ex, and he's trying to come back around. We talked last season about how believable we think this is. But what we saw tonight was intense. And that slap that started out this episode was kind of a big deal. What do you say, guys? I feel like I almost didn't believe it on Nikki's part, but when he got mad and punched the locker, then I was like, oh, maybe, <laughs> yeah, that maybe is real. for real this <laughs> happened. Who would intentionally hurt their hand on purpose? So it had to be real, right? I mean, he might know how to great do a great like stunt fake punch the locker, <laughs> right. but it sounded real. But uh, I don't know. And then when Bree was like, I told you, I told you, I was kind of buying it. See, I was thinking the other way around. I thought that he was being more like calculated as if he was acting, and she was being more legit. Like as the mm. producers had said, go have this conversation with her, and she was the one who was really surprised. Mm. Maybe. Mm. What do you think, Paulina? On his part, I don't know. You, I feel like he had to try. I feel like he would have regretted it if he never said anything. I feel like he does have feelings for her, and he does really love her, but like she said, too little too late. Yeah, and he was being super aggressive and annoying, right? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was being funny. 
Well, maybe first maybe later on. Guy, later on in the yeah. Trying to be a comedian, so I mean, that's why you're here, episode. George. Straight male perspective. Give it to us. <laughs> hey. And oh. yeah, James, our engineer in the booth, will be chiming in as well. He's also a huge Total Divas fan. No, but I gotta respect what Dolph Ziggler did, or Nick, or are they calling him? What are they calling him? Nick well, or Nick Ziggler? And well, Dolph. when Nikki was trying not to sound too friendly about him, as it's with John, she called him Dolph, but otherwise it was Nick. So nice little fun fact: uh, one of Dolph Ziggler's first wrestling names was Nikki. Really? Yeah. When he was part, of, when he was a cheerleader, his name was his name was Nikki. I have an action figure of him like that. Me too. Oh, no! I had John I'll see if Cena I can find and it. Daniel Bryan action figures that I was going to come set on I the can... table because George likes to play with them. And I I'll see if I can find week. it. And it actually says Nikki on his uh, trunk. So kind of a uh, you know, whole full circle thing. Nikki going Awkward. out with Nikki. Ooh. Well, what did you think of his conversation at the bus? Was He was not being too much, you didn't think? I mean, I, I, I got to respect it. I mean, if he's got to follow his heart. If, if that's how he feels, you just, you know, you got to follow it. That's so sweet. Well, Brie <laughs> Bella's reaction to this was not to be sisterly, but to give Nikki a big fat, I told you so, and you shouldn't be hanging out with him or talking to him. Anyway, I didn't think that that was the reaction I would want my sister to have. Really? But I don't have any, so. Hmm. I would have done the you exact same sister, thing. You right, Paulina? I have, I've got two, and I would have done the same thing. I'd been like, you know what, whatever you choose to do, I support you, but eh, pump the brakes. You should not go anywhere near that. Or I would be like, hear what he has to say. And that way he can get it all out and vent or whatever it is that he needs to do and keep it moving. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if, if it doesn't matter, then why even go through it? Because I mean, what if it, he it, needs it? What if he needs that closure? Yeah, may, maybe he needs it, but maybe she doesn't. But he needs it. I, I think it's fair. I think it's fair to always get that other person closure. Yeah, yeah I, I, agree. Or else I mean, I agree. Just gonna... I'm trying to think of her perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would have done the same thing as Brie. I have a little sister, and yep, I would have been like, I told you so. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have gotten in the middle being like, I'm going to stand here waiting for you to talk to her and make sure it's okay with her. Like, no, I would have been like, oh, deal with that. Well, he comes back around. Yeah. He's, he's not right. done after being slapped. Right. And at this point, Nikki tells him that they can't be friends anymore. And then they go and tell Paige all about what just happened. <laughs> but I her? thought maybe Nikki's finally <laughs> smarting up and saying, you know what, we can't be friends. And yet they have this chemistry and this cute little flirty back and forth that makes me want them to be friends to be together. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, she still looks spin to me. Very spin. When when he had the when he had his uh when he was shirtless, you well, can kind of yeah. see her. Well, I mean, girl wouldn't like that. <laughs> I know. Just saying. I don't know. We didn't hate it. No, she totally did. She kind of has that look on her face, like a little bit love struck puppyish type, right? I'll get but into I, it. I think she handled it handled it correctly. I I don't think they can be friends. I agree. I mean, you can't help it sometimes, especially when you work in the same uh. Same building all the and time. And that's we saw, the mistake. That's we, why you don't date people we, from work. We saw it last week too with our last year, last season with uh, Wade Barrett and Alicia Fox, where it's like, mm -hmm. well, they're around, they're around each other so much. And at times too, it's like, yeah, it's easy to say don't date people that you're working with, but when you're only around these people all, all the time, the time mm -hmm. you're not. And it's not even like you're working in, in a building. You're literally traveling together. You know, you, you run each other at the, at the at the rental car place. You run each other when you're checking in for hotels. It's just trust me. I'm sure if they had a choice, they probably wouldn't. But you know, you just gotta mm -hmm. whatever's near you. Mm -hmm. Three hundred days a date year. People that are in that mindset. You know, an average person is not gonna want to date you when you're on the road. You know, All the forty-eight time, yeah. weeks out of the year. Mm -hmm. So factor that in. And they also kind of understand that lifestyle as well. It's a very grueling lifestyle. If you're dating somebody who's not in the business, you're always like, oh, how come, you know, I never see you? Baby, I'm at work, you know? Just, right. This is work for them. At the same time, it's some of them are living their dream, but some of them, they just look at it as work. This is their job. So should the new rule be don't date a second time at work? Because <laughs> then <laughs> look where you're at. <laughs> Only bang one guy you work with, not more than one. <laughs> All right, well, this is the point in the show where the viewers are introduced to the Divas Revolution. Going going completely the other direction now, we're going to talk about real wrestling for a second. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, now, George and I are huge wrestling fans. We watch all the stuff. We know everything that's going on. You guys are here to represent the majority of Total Divas fans who the don't drama. watch TV or who don't watch wrestling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you guys care about hearing about the Divas Revolution? Are you interested in what that is? And what for the sake do? of the show, yes. 
that's probably as far as it goes. Mm -hmm. I like to see as much wrestling as they do incorporate into the show, it's the perfect amount for me. Because I feel like I know peripherally what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's a good word. For their job. <laughs> word of the day. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I don't need to know any more than that. I'd love to go to a live match like yeah, Bowl for 2016. Here. But I don't feel like investing any more of my, like I watch so much TV as it is. I don't have any more time to put into watching wrestling matches <laughs> It's like a 10 so, hour a week commitment. Right. <laughs> so I'm happy that like I get just enough of the clips during the show to fill me in on what's going on. Yeah. Well, now that you've agreed to maybe go to a live match, Megan, let's we go. Are in. No, well, we, we all have to go. go. I've never been either. It's so I'm much fun. I'm all for that. Look, I won't spend that much time, like you said, 10 hours watching that show, but <laughs> I'll go to a game anytime or oh, yeah. a match. If you like to drink <laughs> and eat and yell stuff, exactly. done, you'll have a good time. I want one of those huge plastic cups full of beer, <laughs> and I want a hot dog, and I want to scream, and I, let's go. <gasps> oh, I love it. Okay, so you guys are mildly interested in the Divas Revolution, yes? Yes. All right, that's one thing that I was really excited to see on this season. Not just Nikki having her Divas title reign, but also what is going on behind the scenes as the ladies are experiencing the Divas Revolution. On the other hand, the guys aren't doing so well. Natty's husband is out with a very serious neck injury. Um, Brie Bella's husband is still out, Daniel Bryan. This is something that they, it seems like the same storyline over and over again, but the guys just keep getting hurt. Mm -hmm. I kind of have seen enough of it though. Like I don't really care what Bryan's gonna do. It's total divas, not total Daniel Bryan show. I actually would enjoy it because this is a problem with their personal lives. Like these are their husbands; they can't really get rid of them. You know, <laughs> <But> they're going <laughs> to be a, they're going to be a part of the storyline. I would love to see them go through like the transition with their husband not wrestling anymore because it seems like everybody just keeps like clawing their way back in. Like, I think that's because we they haven't decided yet. As yeah. we saw, Brian's still trying to wrestle. He hasn't come to the to terms of okay, I'm really not going to be in the ring anymore. And I think once that happens, then we'll be able to see it. Mm -hmm. Well, kind of a spoiler alert, not really though, but because um, in and obviously this was shot a few months ago, so obviously a lot's happened in a few months. He still hasn't come back to wrestle, okay. and rumor has it that this weekend he's actually going to get maybe one more final analysis on see if he can actually come back for good or not, um, or at least for the WWE. So again, we'll, we'll kind of see what happens. Mm, I want him to come back. Obviously, I'm a huge Daniel Bryan fan, so I'm open that. Um, obviously, his health is his number one priority as well. So I hope he's healthy. I hope he can go back to what he loves. And we'll get into it a little bit more because I know Bree's kind of like, you got to start thinking life after wrestling. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to check out what the folks are saying in the chat roll. And they are talking about the Divas and the Divas matches. <laughs> like the good Perfect. wrestling fans that they are. So we'll check in with them in we'll a little bit. We'll see you there bit. this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? Uh, this is the point at which we see the Beast in the East match from the ladies. Now, okay, a couple problems with this and a couple praises for this. This was a fantastic match. If you do want to start watching, the Beast in the East match with Nikki Bella, Tamina, and Paige would be a great place to start. Now, that match was initially supposed to have um, our old Total Divas alum Trinity, Naomi, instead of Tamina, but she had a death in the family. So that was a great match that the ladies had. I'm glad that they showed it a little bit. However, that match took place on the same night as the John Cena, Dolph Ziggler tag team match that we had to go through this entire episode for. And everyone knows that. We all sat and watched them happen at the same time. So I'm very curious as to why they felt the need to throw the match in at this point in the episode instead of keeping everything chronological for the very close watching wrestling fans who do care about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I was glad that we got to see the match a little bit. Did that yeah. interest you guys? I didn't know that. I mean, they, I, so they, they showed it, was it out very of briefly. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, they do that also. But then yeah. again, the people that, that you know, catch that and care about wrestling like you, like you do don't care about the drama on the show i you care know? about continuity right i, I do too i do we all work in film i we i think that i care about because i was curious too and uh because obviously i know a lot about wrestling and i don't know everything so i, I was just gonna say you okay yeah. <laughs> you okay? Did you, you can't, did you drop i'm good i'm good okay. i'm good <laughs> um so i was looking at like wait were they in washington dc because i know that's where they showed at you know from dc this is right. where nikki and the whole everything with Dolph ziggler so I was like oh was it were they in dc okay so they were in washington dc the Monday before Japan, but that was not the person that John Cena was facing. Okay. I don't know, just things like that kind of bug me. And I'm like thinking to myself, why Why do you have to not, why do you have to edit it? Just show what actually happened in the actual match. Mm -hmm. They didn't show him wrestling, they showed him wrestling someone else. Just show what really happened. I, I think that the producers and the people who are working behind the scenes don't know wrestling and don't really care if you wrestled Goldust oh. or Cesaro or who they it was. They don't, it's drama, and they it's should. Key. They should, but they should. 
I think, yeah, because wrestling fans watch and they're like, why are they mixing up the matches? Why do they feel the need to do that? Like, that would piss me off if I knew that it was continuity mm-hmm. was all screwed up. But what I was upset about was, like, I like when they go away and they mm-hmm. go sightseeing together. And I felt like the sightseeing portion when they were in Tokyo was so dumb. I think Tokyo is probably <laughs> the most amazing city that they could have shot really cool stuff in. And it's like... Paige went to a cat cafe. It's like, <laughs> okay, well, it's not New York City, and she's a homeless lady with a, in a cardboard box with cats all around her. Like, she could have gone any, like, Have stunning. you been to Tokyo before? No, but I just, like, a million <laughs> times I've seen it in TV and movies, and it's, like, so visually like stunning. Like, the last place you would go to was, was a, a cat, cat cafe. cafe. Right, it's just so visually stunning over there. They could have done so many cool things, and, like, getting the fish spa thing and the cat cafe was, ugh, the producers really (laughs) did not do themselves any favors. And we've seen both of those on reality TV a million times. Anytime they go to Japan on reality TV, they do do the fish pedicure thing that's Mm. so gross anyway. They (laughs) always go to the cat cafes. It's like, let's, like, Buna Murray open the book and, like, go between the lines a little bit and do something a little bit different. Like, I know they think they have the formula down, but let's... Like Check a it cool a bit. restaurant. Yeah. I, there's all kinds of crazy theater stuff over there. Like anything. Mm-hmm. Agree. I feel like we're gonna see that in uh, Paris a few a few weeks from now. I know they went to Paris and they showed it in the in the sneak preview as well. So I feel like that's gonna be more of like of what you want to see, like mm-hmm. the Paris. It's like, but yeah, I agree with you. Like Tokyo, it just looks so beautiful. I just want to, yeah. It, it's definitely now. It's like now I kind of want to go to that fish pedicure thing. <laughs> Ew. That grossed me out. I was thinking about how many fish like ate on how many different people's feet. It, I hear that's a myth. I don't know. I've never done it. It's that they just don't that actually heard. do anything? Yeah, it's just like an experience to oh. have. I, well, if they're but biting don't go you, I don't know. that's dangerous. Do they suck the dead skin off? Is that's that what they're supposed to do? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, they do bite because according to Nikki, and she, and, she, and she said, and I quote, um, I, they like a uh, bit me. <laughs> she did say that. In a she very yelled Nikki Bella pretty style. loud. I was like, whoa, that's hurt. Well, what Paige is dealing with at this time is that she's learned that Kevin's parents are coming. And she still doesn't want to get married. We still don't know why she said yes in the first place. But she has a little phone call with Foxy. It was, was pretty much all we saw of Foxy tonight, which I love mm-hmm. her. I would love to see more of her. But so that's what's going on with Paige. She's still not happy and she still hasn't addressed it. And this sort of felt like... Not even like a cliffhanger, but just like, okay, let's wrap this up. Like, tell your man and get it over with, and let's see if that happens throughout the rest of the episode. Did he not watch last season? That's what <laughs> I was thinking. That's a good question. I feel like he's on the road a lot. He probably didn't. Well, time, she time, time, but then again, but then again wise, where that broke up, yeah, I was going to say, the, this what is still, happened was, this, I would say was part, would have been a part of last season. Mm-hmm. They just broke they it up. This is still July-ish and in, in mm-hmm. the real world time. I forgot when that episode actually aired, maybe like September or so? Oh, I'm pretty sure he knew way before that. About what? Wait, about the... About her not wanting to be engaged. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But the scene that they shot was a was long yeah. ass yeah. time ago. What we saw tonight. God damn it, reality TV. Oh, I'm sorry to ruin it for you, girl. Well, Daniel Bryan wants to have a conversation about a relationship, but not Paige's. He's talking about Nikki and John's relationship, and he said some crazy things. I think he and Brie are sitting talking about his future and their new business venture, which we'll get to in a little bit. But he, a couple quotes from him, he calls their relationship a weird Weird. relationship in general. And I hated the way that he was like, oh, and he's all, you know, I won't marry you, but I'll buy you stuff. And it just sort of like came across as, do you want to buy your woman stuff and you're mad that you can't? Which Mm. Dan O'Brien is not that way. So then what's your issue? Like why even, it's none of his business. He's always overstepping his boundaries as far as Nikki is concerned. They both are. And I just didn't need to hear these comments from him. I thought it was kind of rude. Yeah, I feel like it's tired. Like, the two of them always talk smack about Nikki and mm-hmm. her choices. Because they're all about minimalism and being local and we're, like, saving the earth. Which I love about the both of them. I really do. <laughs> so I, like, I, I have such a girl crush on Brie. Like, I really do. But it's like, we're so tired of hearing about how you do not agree with Nikki's over-the-top lifestyle. Like, get something else to complain about. And they're about. two separate couples and two, four separate individuals to mm-hmm. each his own if they... Let them spend their money the way that they want to. I don't think that's a big deal, but I I don't know. I think he's just tired of the whole conversation of marriage and John and Nikki and what are you going to do and don't you want kids and that whole thing. It's just just decide already type of thing. I don't know. I would get sick of it if it were my sister, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I kind of chuckle when I said that comment, but I say this all the time and I think about this all the time where you have Brie and Nikki that are twins 
identical twins. Obviously, one of them got a little surgical enhanced. Let's be real. <laughs> uh, but for some reason, I, c- I can never see John Cena with Brie or Daniel Bryan with Nikki. No. That's just so weird all. to me. I can't even picture it. Yeah, that's bizarre. That would not It's work. like they're twins, but yet you can't see them with, with the opposite spouses. It's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's not the only one talking smack because Dolph Ziggler, hmm. man, this guy was on fire tonight, Dolph Ziggler. So he and, uh, well, he makes a little surprise appearance. Paige, right? No, 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 no. I, I did not like Paige in this situation. Like, no, you do not need to be a mediator. No, you do not need to involve yourself because now it just got real awkward and then they argued even more. Mm-hmm. She was being like a real housewives pot stirrer. Is she what was. she was doing. She was a real Lisa Vanderpump. This <laughs> <time>. <laughs> but she, it was weird because she was like creeping around the corner watching hmm. the two of them have that conversation where he was like, my eyes are up here. You know, when she was like, I'm going to tell him. No, I'm going to tell him. No, I'm going to tell him. Like she creeped around the corner for that whole convo. Then she decided to get involved and invite them to the fish pedicure. And it just was all very... Yeah, she sees this conversation go down between them where Dolph tells Nikki that she's settling and they're very flirty. And then Mm. at the fish pedicures, he says crazy things about John Cena. Uh, like, oh, he's never going to change and that he runs awkwardly to the ring. Well, he does. Dude, but you should probably, <laughs> if you're Dolph Ziggler, I know the people who don't want dressing maybe don't get the hierarchy, but if you're Dolph Ziggler, you probably shouldn't talk crap about John Cena's wrestling. Uh, he doesn't care. You don't think so? I don't think he cares. It's, it's, no, I don't think so either. I think it's more the fact that, okay, he's got the girl that I want type of thing. Mm-hmm. It's like girls, it's like girl women hating on other women. It's like, ugh, I don't, mm-hmm. it's just catty. Mm-hmm. Well, he's pushing hard at this point in this yeah. conversation. He is challenging Nikki on, well, what do you really want? And these things like calling him your soulmate. Well, that's what you said about me, too. And he's never going to change. It, to me, just sort of came across as like you're just reminding her that you were a jerk and that you wouldn't change. But mm-hmm. I think kind of like a little newsworthy thing, too, is like I think going back to, to last season where I think Nikki finally came around and finally saw John Cena's ways. Now she's saying, I want to change his mind again. I, w- I want to convince him to get married, and you know who knows that's going to be step one. Step two is obviously going to be the children. You know, I so. think she's always going to be in that mindset. Mm-hmm. No, you're right, but she totally like rescinded that last season and was like, nope, okay, I'm good, I'm done talking yeah. about it. You're right. So I think Ziggler was more like, or Dolph Ziggler was like, hey, he's never going to change yet. I'm ready for all this stuff that you always wanted. So mm-hmm. again, I mean, I blame Paige, like you said. I think she just her just trying to be the dramatic girl that she just wants to be. You know, she just can't, you know, be happy with everybody being happy and, you know, being, you know, calm. She has to be there and instigate. Mm-hmm. What if this is Dolph Ziggler's way of just getting TV time? <laughs> well, that could I be mean, entirely true. We know that he's had a girlfriend for about the last year and that this storyline is pretty flimsy in the first place. <laughs> I feel like there is, like, undeniable chemistry between the two of them, though. Mm-hmm. It's very true. flirty. Mm-hmm. I don't... With her and John, it's not like that. I feel like he plays, like, a very... I don't want to say fatherly role, but he's, yes. he keeps no, himself yes. so, like, buttoned up with her and, and so, like... Yeah, like, I'm going to scoot your chair in for you and... It's always my man, and what is he? She call loves her? that though. Yes, but it's it's a whole different element with Dolph, and it's like more fun it's and more exciting natural. and cute, and like Dol- yeah, I, I feel like you that. can see like the little bolts of electricity flying between them. Like it's Ooh. really cute, and I like I would like the story to. Keep it's kind of like how uh, like, like, like John and Trinity were. They just you just you can just tell mm. they just click. Yeah, like nothing seems forced and whatnot. Yeah, I saw the same with Dolph and uh, Nikki. Ooh. Well, definitely some major fireworks also happening between Paige and what the Kevin. <laughs> I keep wanting to call him Jeff. I don't know why. Was that the last guy's name? Between Paige and Kevin. She last guy was Bradley. It's Bradley. Oh, that's right. Good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Morning, guys. Bradley. Well, another person who's kind of in the dark about this whole engagement thing is Paige's mother. Now, speaking of the timing of this, yes. I remember reporting this on News and Gossip last season. So this was shot while we were still watching last season. Her mom calls and is like, "What the hell? I just found out on TV that you're engaged." Show? You didn't like even when? tell me. On Total Divas. Well, no. does her mom live in the UK still? Yes. Yeah. It probably aired on like some local gossip show. Like somehow it got to like it a got out. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the E News of UK or something, probably. Or the producers just called her and told her. Oh, because <laughs> this mean, isn't like the Rosa Mendez thing where like we know she's been engaged and we know and we're going to see it on Total Divas. Yeah, right. Pregnant. 
Probably true. The producers probably did call her because of the timing of her trying to have that important talk with Kevin on camera and her mom calling and screaming at her about the same thing. Right. Mm, probably. Well, this finally gets the conversation flowing between her and... I had to look at it again. Kevin. Between Kevin. her and Kevin. And they finally sort of have it out. And instead of apologizing or explaining herself, Paige sort of picks a fight with him and acts really immaturely as Paige. Well, sometimes she's does. young, and I say that all the time. And you're she making excuses is. for her, Paulina. She, because she is young, and that's what he gets for dating someone so young. She's not ready for marriage. Mm -hmm. He's quite. If you ask her in five years, I'm pretty sure she will be. Mm -hmm. It's on him for trying to like, wife up. But what is she? Twenty two. I don't know. I said nineteen. She's, you know? I mean, she's so immature from what we see on. The show, I can't imagine how much worse it is in real life to live with her. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know why you're trying to wife that up, honey, but <laughs> I thought, he must be that young, too. Yeah, Agreed. but I, I thought no, he like was going to have a more angry reaction. Right. Like, okay, like, storm out of the room, you know? Like, I don't know. I would have been pissed. I feel mm -hmm. like she wears the pants. Like, oh, he said, you're not going to lose me ever. He never got upset, raised his voice. All he did was say... You're never gonna lose me ever, and which I probably like, would have loved actually. If the guy oh said my! That can to you me. imagine a guy having a calm reaction after you were like faking wanting to be engaged to him for weeks? Like, oh! I mean, I guess that's why it works between the two of them. If he was the kind of hothead who would go off and get mad, they probably they would not each still other be together. Out, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was a little. It was not enough of a reaction for me. No, oh yeah, he no. had a right to be angry. Mm -hmm. And, and he now he's got to worry. No. no, it was the worst. No. Like, no, how awkward would that? It was be? such a non-reaction. And now they have to deal with his parents are coming and thinking that they're engaged in wedding <gasps> planning, and and now the mom now she's got to call her mom back and be like, actually, mom, <laughs> I'm not engaged, so you don't even have to worry about the details. And she still hasn't even gotten a nap since getting off the plane. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot. All right, we'll give her that. We'll give her it's that. It's a lot for one afternoon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, John and DZ are still in Japan. Dolph Ziggler are still oh. in Japan. This is the point at which we see their tag team match. Now, I was kind of wondering throughout the show as they're saying, oh, the guys are going to tag. I was wondering if people knew what that meant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew. I did. Be, okay. Part, yes. <laughs> we're teaching them well, George. Uh, so that means that they were going to be in a tag team match together. And that just made this all the more intense to me. Like, how dare Dolph Ziggler say these things about John Cena and his relationship, and then he's going to go out and work with the guy? But, th but that's work, though. That's what you got to do. It's well, still that must weird, have been difficult. Though. It's super weird. Well, it's, weird. well, it's like... not weird for him. And by the way, for our thoughts on that match and for the triple threat match with Paige, Tamina, and uh, Nikki Bella, you can just go to UFC. Oh, I'm sorry, UFC. You can go to <laughs> WWE After Buzz, Beast in the East, as me and Christy and Steve Kaufman reviewed those matches. That's right. Check that out as well. I know it's late, guys, but we got all kinds of good stuff for you to watch. You got forever to watch it, but you know. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, yeah, so so the guys are going to get in the match and tag together. Is that something that when you guys hear that, are you like, oh, that's so weird, and how does that work? And I have a little no. crush on John Cena, so I, I know what a tag match is, mm -hmm. and from watching Divas, actually, I know what it is. Um, <laughs> and so I, anytime they throw John wrestling in, I get excited. I'm like, oh yeah, take your shirt off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not attracted to Daniel Bryan in any way. I love his, no. like, yes thing, like, cute, whatever, but I'm not attracted to him. Like, John Cena, I'm like, take your shirt off! Like, yes! I love him. I get that all the time, too. <laughs> Dolph, the, has a, sure Dolph looked do. great in those. What was he wearing? Jeans with no shirt in that? Does, Does it matter what he's wearing? wearing as long as I was just like, them. wow, you Something are phenomenal, too. How will Nikki ever choose? <laughs> nice little fun fact former ex boyfriend of Amy Schumer. Dolph, no. yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shut the front door. In mm -hmm. fact, I think a big thing is what like. What did they do? Tell, have you guys, tell have you guys seen, have you guys seen Trainwreck? Yes, yes, John, John Cena's, Cena's in role it. is pretty much Dolph Ziggler in real life. Shut mm -hmm. the front door. She made really bad fun of him. Mm hmm. She was oh saying, like, on God. Howard Turner one time that, like, he's very acrobatic in bed. Oh. Too athletic for her. Yeah. Huh. But, but that's just well, another yeah. thing that makes this triangle. That's a triangle, too. Like, he played her love interest in the movie in a role that was really oh. about her real life, Dolph Ziggler, and they're still <laughs> the same guy. Like, Maybe her. Dolph knew that John signed on to play that role. And he was pissed, Ooh. and he was like, "I'm gonna try to get with Nikki on the show just for just." I think to like, okay, I think that's too much. Let's just that say that they did I, had, I do a lot of real did housewives, casting. so <laughs> this no, is where my I remember mind goes. Watching Trainwreck, and I think you know a very obviously it was a little bit little bit covered up, but a very naked John Cena on top of Amy Schumer. I'm like, wow. So they've both been on top of Amy Schumer, and they've both been on top of Nikki. Okay, Bella. but that's a character. 
I know technically, physically, he's on top of her, but that's also a character. He's not going to go back and be like, ha, I was on top of your No, no, obviously. I just No, thought- and it's funny because that conversation when John had to tell Nikki. That was for that. That was for that. Movie. Yeah. yeah, exactly. When he had to tell her, hey, I'm going to be half naked in a sex scene, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. And she that was okay. the movie. Major issue. That's yeah, for that she did. Apatow movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what, did they meet, did Dolph and Amy Schumer meet because he's trying to do stand-up? Or was trying to do stand up? Yeah, because he was trying to like work in the comedy yeah. circuit. He comes to LA a lot and does like improv oh. and stuff. One of our co hosts, actually, Christian Rosenberg, does improv with him. Oh. George and I went once, but how does he? That. Okay, so question because <laughs> I don't watch enough of the wrestling. Right. How does he have enough time off to do that? You see, not, oh, he doesn't maybe travel as much as the like. A list. No, that is a great question. And from what I've heard him saying is that on his two days off, he'll come to LA instead of going home and really huh. work on his comedy career and his stand up. And a lot of times when him. he a lot of times when they when he does have shows here in LA, the comedy shows, it's usually on the weekends that WWE is here in LA. So it's like, Oh, mm-hmm. I'm here in LA. Let me do a show and, and you know, at the local improv in Hollywood. So Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they so do we'll work go to one of those two week. ladies. They work a five day week usually? Yes. Four they, to five, yeah. They work, um, what is it, Thursday through Tuesday, right, George? Pretty much, yeah. Friday, you know, they're home for Wednesday, Thursday, fly off Friday, work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, TV Monday, Tuesday, and then I'll do it all over again. And that's then I get a whole terrible. day off. I was trying to listen to that. I mean, the, the travel oh, gets tough, but that's not a terrible schedule. I thought no, it was worse. We have to remember with the Total Divas cast that they're also filming on their off days. So Ooh. these ladies that we're watching probably never get a day off. I'd be like, you girls can film me on my hours and I'm not wrestling <laughs> on my five days. The two days are for me. I'm getting a pedicure that you're not filming. <laughs> yeah, Joseph Boza said Nick books a lot of his shows around his WWE schedule because his comedy career is his plan B. Oh. Uh, actually, the chat role really didn't care for Dolph Ziggler's behavior tonight. Someone called him a oh. douche. <laughs> sorry, I that, mean, he's sorry, a little that, douchey. Robot. At least he's hot. That was- Claire, oh, Claire, Claire Megan, um, Claire Bowie, who is a huge, a huge fan and one of our number one fans. She loves that you said shut the front door. Oh, <laughs> we Hi, like to keep Claire. it clean here on the Total Divas After Show. I like, that you, said, I like that you said one of our number one fans, as if there can be more than more than one number one fan. I think we it could be a, a major we, tie. It's just an We've got a lot of big guys. fans, but Claire, Claire <laughs> is way But I do think Claire is there, number one. Mm-hmm. Claire is our, the Divas champion of After Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> Emmanuel Dominguez is with us. Maria Hernandez Perez. I love it. Keep chatting with us, Hola. guys. Do you all have anything that you would like to add about this episode? Yeah, we didn't talk about Ooh. Brie and uh, Daniel Bryan's conversation about the local spot. Oh, yes. yes. I'm going to have some extra details about that in News and Gossip, but let's chat about it a little bit. This is annoying to me. Yes. That, okay, you go with it, Paulina. All right. Why is it Here annoying it is. to us? <laughs> I, I understand her intentions as a wife to be like, to, to think ahead and say, you need a plan B. What if this doesn't work out? Because I'm a realist. I can go ahead and say that, too. At the same time, I think that I wouldn't, like he said, it's forced on him. Mm -hmm. I think that's her dream and her plan B because Mm -hmm. I think she feels a lot stronger about it. I would probably push, think of a plan B rather than giving him, you have this, 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 and this, and this. I think that's where she kind of screwed up. Mm, because he I was felt, like, eh, I don't want to do it. Eh, I don't want to be there. I know. It felt so terrible for him because it's so obvious that he was not into it. She's mm-hmm. dragging him into her business plan that she has with other women. And she's like, oh, honey, when I'm at work. So I think he felt very emasculated at the mm-hmm. moment. It's like, when I'm at work, the job that you are not allowed to do right now because you physically are not able, you can do my job for me. I just think he felt so emasculated, and he was like, this is not for me. And right. he couldn't make it any more clear, like, I only think about wrestling. I'm gardening, and I only think about wrestling. Like, it, I just... I don't, sh- I don't know if it's for the show, but she's constantly doing this thing where she pays no attention to his feelings and pushes her agenda. The whole, like, I want babies, I want babies, I want babies. My husband, my husband. Like, please, Bellas, stop calling Brian my husband. You can use his name, Brian. And John is always my man. It's like, please use John. Like, we know who they are. We don't need to constantly be reminded of their title in your life. Like, we know. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Well no, we said. complained about that last season, too. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. It bugs the crap out of me. Yeah. Yeah, let's see if the folks in the chat roll have a problem with any of this baby, baby this, and baby that. Nope. They don't I care. I thought it was a Why note. doesn't he just go down to the performance center? 
and, and just like hang and out just there watch people and give tips or... yeah because he, just, he doesn't want to do doesn't that to. he doesn't want to he even said it earlier about uh, his tough, tough enough. enough experience it's like oh, i didn't like tough enough and even uh reading his book he's like dude he doesn't like he he's tried that training aspect and he's just not a fan of it he wants to be in the ring wrestling but i think he he also said that he feels like he's gonna lose fans and respect because that's all they want to see him yeah. doing is wrestling but if he's got fans like he says he does it's like for example i love kobe bryant he's gonna retire i don't care what he does i'm gonna be a fan and follow him and still respect him he mm -hmm. still will have that he's never just gonna leave vanessa honey <laughs> just oh. in a different way and I just don't think he has found what he wants to do yet. He's tried coaching. He doesn't like it. And yeah. I think once it's official, like, hey, you cannot wrestle, then it'll hit. And then he'll figure it out and everything will fall into place. And it's not even that he doesn't like coaching. It's just like, yes, you have to coach these guys to, to do stuff. It's like, no, I want to be the one getting coached. I want to be the one. I, I, I still want to be considered a professional wrestler. Right. Um, yeah, so I, I agree with him. It's just kinda, It is kind of a little frustrating when your wife is pretty much trying to make that decision for you. It's like pretty much, you know, think of maybe somebody close to you guys in your life saying, you know, I know you haven't closed the book on your on your dream yet, but let's just start thinking ahead. Yeah. No, of course. And and personally, I've been told that, but I think it's just, I think she's coming from the place of where like, okay, start getting those wheels turning. Mm -hmm. You know, here's an idea. Just think about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point, though. If my husband even mildly suggested that I should stop trying to be a host, that would be the end of that. <laughs> that would be all I'd need to hear. But I think, that, I think that's where Brian uh, Brian's coming in, where he's like, she keeps thinking that you know, Bray's trying to push this upon him. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, th I, think, I think thinking about it is okay, but I think Bree's literally like, all right, no, do so, so on my day off, you're, you're going to do this, you're going right. to do that. It's like, what, what, what? So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have anything you'd like to add about the episode? I didn't like Nikki reacting at the end about like why like John oh my not gosh. overreacting. We may have skipped that entirely. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get to news and gossip because <laughs> I have information have about Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella's business oh. that I was just going to segue to. But since we didn't talk about Nikki and John yet, let's pull out that last see that last scene of the show. They're still in Japan. They are out to dinner, and she finally tells John all about what happened. Mm -hmm. His reaction was a big old surprise to me. Not quite enough, what did you guys think? It wasn't a surprise to me because it was John Cena. I think we see him a lot being very mature and uh -huh. very level-headed mm -hmm. that I was like, oh, okay. Just another typical response from John. And I think he meant exact, I mean, he meant what he said. He was very genuine. But then again, if I were Nikki, I'd be like, come on, you know, do something about it. But I think it was, mature and fair to give her the option to let her know be like you know what if this really truly isn't what you want the door is open to make yourself happy mm -hmm. and that's fair i think from john's standpoint i think maybe he was looking at it as if nikki was trying to not not give her give him an ultimatum but just kind of throwing it out there it's like hey listen there's this guy that I was in a relationship with that is willing to give me all the things that that you're not giving me. Right. Like so, bait him in. Yeah. So it's just kind of like kind of like a, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, like dangling the carrot. I don't know. I don't really? know what the phrase is. Just put just throwing it there. Just put it out there. It's like, hey, John, you know, this is I, I have someone. I think that's what John's perspective was. So that's why he was like, okay, well. He didn't want to give her a big reaction because he thought that's what she wanted. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, you know, obviously you're a grown woman. You know, yeah. you can you you're a big girl. You can do whatever it is that you want to do and. If that's the decision that you want to make, great, you know. Do you guys think the conversation was different when the cameras were off and those two went home? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do too. I do. And the fact that she chose to use the words, Dolph proposed to me. Oh, yeah. No, he didn't. He said, I can give you, as in we should be in a relationship again because I'm willing to be a husband and a father, unlike your current boyfriend. Mm -hmm. He did not propose to you, Nikki. <laughs> so, the, A, that was not a good way to present that, that to John Cena. She, I remember her saying that. I was like, what? And I wrote it down. I was like, <laughs> propose? No, 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 no. So, and then I think he kept his reaction dull to, to piss her off on purpose, mm -hmm. is what I think. Yeah. That's what I think. Because he always seems very level-headed. Like, I can't even think about John Cena. Like, I want to see him mad. Me but too. Not for, not for that reason, maybe some other reason. I just don't see him as that type. Mm -hmm. I can't believe he said, well, at least you still got it. Okay, <laughs> okay. I, okay, oh, I can under... It, take it as a compliment. It's just so dismissive. I mean, it's like, say I had a boyfriend and got hit on by a girl. I'd be like, okay, 
you know, nothing happened. Respectfully, thank you. You know, yeah. it's a compliment to me that I've got someone that yeah. everybody wants. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, for a guy, is it the same way? I mean, I think it is for, for different people. I know there, I mean, I'm sure, obviously, maybe you guys, the, you girls have dated people in the past where it's like they overreact over somebody just looking at you guys. You right, know? every guy's different. Um, I mean, me personally, I'm very much so like the John Cena where both physically and you know, emotionally, where um, <laughs> I, I'd be like, yeah, okay. Like, I, I would think of it as a compliment. As like, yeah, that that's, you know. Because at the end of the day, it's like, well, Nikki chose me. Yeah. She's still choosing me. She's mm -hmm. still choosing to stay with me. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just didn't like the fact that as if she was looking for this negative energy to come out of him. Like, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the same way as John. Like, I stopped looking for it. I think people have gotten mad at me for not reacting negatively. And I, then think I, of maybe not caring, but it's like, no, it's the complete opposite. I don't think it's, she was looking for a negative way. I, For a girl, it was more of like, no, you want your man to be like, no, that's yes, my woman. Yeah, and that I'm with her and she's with no. me. And that's, and that's how the dare reaction. you say those things to her. Right, right. And that's the reaction that you want. Maybe you don't want him to confront Dolph. Right. You know, you don't want that kind of confrontation, but it's like, you know what? No, that ain't right. That's not no, cool. No, no. And you're then you're like, absolutely oh, right. you know, that's. That feels good. You're absolutely right, but I'm just saying that just because that John didn't react that way doesn't mean that he doesn't care either. No, not yeah. at all. Agreed. Yeah. Mm, oh, I, I was about to get heated. I love these heated debate right debates, now. you guys. Came in, I was, I was wanting to just, no, I disagree. <laughs> he, has to, oh. he has to fight for her. All right, well, you're not getting any more chances to add anything else because it is time, unless you really want to. It's really okay. TJ and Nat, did we forget that? No, he's just injured. Whatever, who cares? Oh, oh, they, they I hope he's okay. Well, they didn't really cover it during this episode. Well, They're no, but I didn't know episodes. that his injury was as serious as yeah. yes, as the Christopher I, Reeves one. Okay, so I, I mean, I saw him at Pro Wrestling Gorilla. I had the pleasure of meeting her and him, and he was walking around. He was such a cool guy. Good. I hope nothing for the best. That when he recovers quick, it was just a couple weeks ago. Back in the oh. ring. Does he Great. still wear the neck brace? He did not have the neck brace on. Oh, good. He okay. He has a gnarly scar on the back yeah. of his neck, though. I read an article about how serious it was and how that they weren't, they didn't cover that on Divas last season. So maybe they <laughs> throw it in this season. Mm -hmm. I think it's well, coming I'm down the pipe. I'm glad that he's healthy. All right. Well, let's roll into some news and gossip. Speaking of what's the latest with all these folks. Well, another minor spoil alert, but if you watch a trailer, not really. We know that Rosa Mendez is pregnant and will be getting engaged in Paris on Total Divas. However, little piece of news that she just spoke out in an interview and said that she is not yet planning the wedding. No wedding planning going on. She wants to concentrate on baby first. And this was really shocking to me. As soon as she has the baby, she said she'll maybe take off a few months, but then she cannot wait to get right back on the road with WWE, and she's going to take her daughter to be named Jordan along with her, which is unbelievable to me. Not a lot of people do that. George, correct me if I'm wrong. I've never heard of... Here and there. Not I mean, like infant me. babies. It depends. Taking babies on the road? It depends. Yeah. It depends um, if you're both in the business. I know Booker T and his wife, Charmel, um, mm -hmm. they had twins. I know he mentioned that they went on the road. Obviously, Triple H and Stephanie, I'm, I'm sure they went on the road a little bit too together, but... It's not, I guess it's rare, but not as rare. Right. It's not like a first if, if, if she were to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, her fiance ain't doing a whole lot else, so I don't know why he can't stay home with the baby. But a little more info on Brie and Brian's business that we saw them launch on this episode. It's called Experience Local USA. Will, of course, be based out of Arizona. That's why Brie wanted Brian doing all the work because he's sitting at home in Arizona. And the point of it, it's like, what is it? To connect local food vendors with consumers which sounds incredibly freaking boring. No, I love that, that whole aspect healthy. of their characters, how they like love all the local crap and like <laughs> they're just such hippies and like dirty hippies and they want to go hiking and like collect the local honey and the whole thing. I love that about them. We need That's more funny. people like them. I love that. I wish I can do that. I just don't have the patience oh, for it. I like, like want to be Brie. I just am not that crunchy. I try. <laughs> I'm just not that crunchy. <laughs> well, I, I find it all a little much. And another little tidbit about them. They talked to TMZ a couple days ago in an interview. And the interviewer was like, do you guys wrestle naked in bed? And it was a big fat no from Daniel Bryan. So speaking of them being oh. boring. Oh, cool. There was just very little news, you guys. 
Even with all the divas working the promo circuit, they get asked the same three freaking questions every time, every interview, every year, and it makes me so annoyed because if I got time with them, I would make sure to get juicy things that would make you all happy and interested. (laughs) So on that note, I have uh, one more little thing. There is a brand new Total Divas official Instagram account. Make sure you check it out, at Total Divas. Nikki Bella took it over today and posted some really cool photos. Her and John had date night. The bottle of wine that she posted cost between $500 and four grand depending oh my that's it God. so i know right i'll Is take two i'll take two <laughs> so definitely check out the total divas instagram and i don't know if, if you guys are on instagram then you've probably seen that john and nikki they've adopted their parents a dog. They're poppy. Mm, they have a dog. little that's puppy right. named winston he looks just like josie he's Brian related and Brian to josie. josie i think <laughs> Um, I haven't seen that I, officially. I think one of Nikki's Instagram said something about that. I could be wrong. I thought she was just being like cute, but maybe. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, she yeah. So kidding. make sure you check out all the cute puppy pics on Instagram. So cute. And on that note, I would like to roll in to do something fun and new this season. You guys have to help me come up with a really good name for it, but we are five seasons in on this show and After Buzz did cover the first season but it was like some random people that aren't here anymore and Christian Rosenberg who now refuses to even acknowledge that the show exists. (laughs) So I thought it would be fun for us to give some of our thoughts on some of the things that went down the first season and I want to do that with a trivia question. All right, because you know, know when Total Divas was off the air, I spent my time going back and watching every single There's season. There's a quiz. I didn't have. Any... Oh, it's just one. I don't know if I saw the first season. I don't have season. a study guide. It's easy. All Uh-oh. right, which Total Diva? Now tonight, big love triangle. But which Total Diva first found herself in a love triangle with a fellow wrestler? All the way back to season one. I don't think I watched season one. Somebody was taken. Bree. Mm-mm-mm. I bet George knows the answer to this. I really don't. You really don't? No. Nobody remembers when Eva Marie took it too far with Fandango right after getting engaged? Really? Yes. Remember they had her only? Yes, she took her ring off. She went out with him that night after she auditioned with him to be his dancer. I thought the the big deal was like that she couldn't dance. Well, it was, but she also pushed it with Fandango. The only memory I have of Fandango, Fandango, is with Summer. Mm -hmm. That's the only memory I have of him. So uh, I didn't know. I didn't watch it. This is why we gotta blast all the way back to the past. Can we do this every show? I love this trivia. Yeah, that is a long time. Mm -hmm. All right, what else you got? So, you know, that was the only one. Just Uh, one for you. (laughs) I'll be sure to study for next week. Oh, well, everybody, if you've got a, a great. I like alliteration. So anything, you know, like total trivia, t- something. Think of a fun, cute name for us, and we'll make sure we give you a little shout out. I and love alliteration. So I had a, I had a, my our dog. Mutual love for alliteration. I had my dog sleep on me one time, and I said, "Pervians make for the perfect pillows for pit bulls." Oh, George just wants everyone <laughs> to know that he has a puppy and is sleeping alone. <laughs> I don't sleep alone. Well. I ladies. sleep with my pit bull. Um, <laughs> but speaking of which, before we wrap up, um, is there anything interesting that you guys like in the upcoming, this season of Total Divas, where they usually show, like, the upcoming season? Uh, well, yeah, let's mix that in with predictions. Okay. Yeah. Flash the lights and do the fun stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yay! Oh, podcasters, you're really missing out on our special effects here. Well, George, answer your own question. Um, I, 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 was a good one. I don't like to get too excited anymore, because, now correct me if I'm wrong, at the beginning of last season... Weren't they like, didn't somebody say something about a sex tape one time? Yes. I don't oh my God, yes. And it was in never... the promo for the second half of last season. And they... I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I, I am kind of looking forward to a little bit more of Eva Marie. Um, mm. Just because I know that she's been wrestling a lot, a lot more and she's actually been getting better as, as time goes by. So I'm kind of curious how her, you know, how she is backstage or how she's, you know, getting uh, a reaction from the backstage crowd, you know, behind the scenes. I know in front of the stage or on a camera, they boo her out of the building. But mm-hmm. obviously, if you're if you're coming in as a bad guy, that's the reaction that you want. Mm-hmm. So I'm mm-hmm. kind of curious how to see how that comes out behind the scenes. Yeah, I think we are going to see her rise in NXT. Also, Rose's engagement. Now, when the ladies go to Paris, they go to Moulin Rouge. Oh. Mm-hmm. So I can't wait. I predict that Brie mode is going to be yes. bountiful <laughs> this season, and I, I can't wait for that. Because that's, that's when she's not boring. Yes. Right? <laughs> can we do a little bit of that? And another prediction I have is that we're going to see some more continuation of this Nikki, Dolph, Cena thing, and it needs to just go away. It needs to be done now. Uh I've had enough. I'm good. 
right? Cliffhanger, right? Oh. We'll wrap it up with a bow. I want to see more, why not? Oh, all That's right. why I watch a show for the drama. <laughs> and I want to see the whole thing between Cena and and Nikki where he says, okay, we can talk about marriage. Yes. And she gets all giggly and smiles, which I'm happy for that. Hopefully it falls through. Mm-hmm. That's the number one thing I'm excited to see this season. Yeah. And I am I want to see um, more Eva drama because mm-hmm. I felt like she just went away. Like it, they built it up so much last year uh-huh. and then it just like, fizzled like they didn't really do anything with it so I want to see if anybody's still coming for her well we know she has a new partner in crime and we talked a little bit about Tough Enough tonight, but there is a brand new diva on the horizon, Amanda Sacamano. She was a runner-up on Tough Enough, and she will be making her debut. I predict that it's going to be very similar to Eva Marie's storyline. When she came in, is that like, they all hate her because she's just coming in, and she got this huge opportunity without putting in a lot of work yet, and so mm-hmm. I think that's going to be especially explosive. Ooh. Can't wait to find out. I her. know, right? It's so exciting. It's going to be a great season, and we are going to be here. We actually dropped that Mandy was going to be joining the cast. Well, we predicted it long before I it was ever announced. It. So, <laughs> God. We have to go back and watch the episode again because that was all me. I predict so, by the end of this season, we have maybe Sasha Banks or at least one or two NXT chicks about to come ruffle some feathers. Oh, I like I that. I would love that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would. Or, you know, even uh, Lana. We saw her a little bit last season. Oh, I thought that might happen. I don't know what who any of them it. look like, but I just want the one who brings the most drama. <laughs> Me too. Well, if the fans want to chat with you ladies about Total Divas and everything else, where can they keep yes. up with you? You guys can go ahead and find me again on Twitter at underscore Paulina Aguilar. And check me out on Instagram at Paulina and Aguilar. <laughs> and you guys can find me on Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram. It's all at Megan Stecker. And it's spelled M-E-G-A-N-S-T-E-C-H-E-R. I even got my Instagram up. Apparently, Peruvians make for perfect pillows for pit bulls. When you follow me at G Hermosa on Instagram and on Twitter. <laughs> Yeah, okay, even hashtag alliteration. <laughs> this is 42 weeks ago, so I'm not trying oh to. Wow. You know, really I think it's time to post something new. Well, I mean, I've had newer pictures since then. Right. But. <laughs> oh, well, anyway. we will see you all back here at 8 p.m. <laughs> Pacific time next week. If you want to get caught up on what's going on with the Total Divas, you know that I have always got you covered. Please check out ChristyReports.com or my YouTube channel. Don't do that when I'm talking. At <laughs> Christy Reports. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Christy Reports. I did a, a fun video that tells you all about what the ladies have been up to and what you're going to see this season. Please check it out. I appreciate it. So glad that you all could join me tonight. This is fun. It's going to be a great season. And we will see you all back here next week to chat more Total Divas. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.